Hello, I'm Barry Osborne from Rural Mission Solutions. Glad you're going to look at this video. It was recorded as part of a series of Sunday morning online services that we set up during the spread of uh, the coronavirus so that people who had no other facilities could tune in and have a regular Sunday service. We also do a Bible study. If you enjoy this video, and the same goes for any of the other videos in the series or in this uh, channel altogether, please remember to give it a thumbs up to say that you liked it. This is helpful to us. So thank you if you would just do that. Now, watch and God bless you. So good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's online Sunday service, the 2nd of August. This year is passing ever so quickly. I thought it was going to go very slowly, uh, but it seems to be going very, very quickly. And today we're looking at an unlikely runaway. And this, of course, is part of our series that we're doing and uh, reminding ourselves that the Bible tells us that God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise and the weak things of the world to shame the strong. So we've been going through a whole series of unlikely choices or surprising choices. And we're dealing today with an unlikely runaway. Gordon is going to give us the talk later on. And I know some of you have been speculating as to who it was. And I wonder if anybody <laughs> did work it out that it's Elijah. Elijah. So <clears throat> tell me when we have the chat at the end. At the moment, you should all be muted. Please make sure you are muted because we're going to have some music in a minute. And if your sound is on, it may make it throw a wobbly. Gordon and I have had to be doing some experimenting on the sound. And um, uh, I'm not 100% sure why we needed to do that because it had, did work well last week. But we'll, we'll, we'll see how we go this week. So let's just have a prayer together, please. Loving Heavenly Father, still our hearts and minds so that we may hear your still small voice today. Lord, what have you got to say to me and to my sisters and brothers? What are you saying? Mm -hmm. Help us to hear your word. Help us to sense your presence. Help us to have a ready heart to say, Lord, here I am. Use me. So, loving Father, we commit our time together to you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And our first hymn <clears throat> is John Bunyan's great hymn, He Who Would True Valor See, Let Him Come Hither. So, a great challenge about the pilgrim journey.
So our scripture reading comes from 1 Kings 19. If you've got a Bible with you, do open it up to 1 Kings chapter 19. And we're going to read from verse 1 through to verse 9. And I'm sure that for many of you here today, this will be a familiar story. If there is anybody here who uh, doesn't know the Bible very well, I hope this may interest you today and always happy to help answer any questions about it. So afterwards, we're having a thing called Coffee Pot. Do stop on if you can, and you can ask questions during that time, or you can drop us an email. But here's the Bible reading for today. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Now Gordon's going to tell us a little bit more about that background later on. So Jezebel, who was the queen, she was married to Ahab, and she was from a foreign uh, religion. She was a priestess uh, in the worship of Baal. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like one of those. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. And when he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there, while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I'm no better, better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank Strengthened by that food, he traveled for 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? And may God bless his word to all our hearts as we ponder on this in a little while. Circumstances so threatening <clears throat> that the prophet of God becomes a runaway. Here's a song which I hope you may know, if not I hope it'll bless you, which talks about God being our hiding place. You know the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it and they are saved. At this point in the original service we included a clip from YouTube found that we were infringing copyright, so we have now deleted it, but you might like to pause the video and listen to that recording, or else listen to it at the end. Meanwhile, let's get back to Gordon and find out what he has to say. Now then, Gordon, I'm going to ask you if you just talk to us for a while about this unlikely runaway. Now, we know he's a runaway, but why have I called him an unlikely run away. Why do you think he was unlikely? Unpack the story for us, please. Yeah, welcome, Barry. And, um, and let's begin with something of the, the back story, because we kind of jumped into it there. And, uh, and the back story is Elijah, whose name means Yahweh is my God, is a major prophet in the Hebrew scriptures. Uh, and yet he doesn't have a book of his words and work like Jeremiah or Isaiah. But his story is to be found in 1 Kings 17 and 19 and 2 Kings 1 to where Elisha picks up Elijah's mantle, quite literally. He prophesied during the time of the divided kingdom, 10 tribes in the north designated as Israel and two tribes to the south designated as Judah. And the kingdoms had split around 930 BC after Rehoboam, Solomon's successor, made some bad choices that the northern tribes wouldn't accept. 
In Judah, the kings are a mixed bag, some atrocious, some good, and some bad. In the north, Israel, the kings are always described as bad. And that could be because if there's one huge no entry sign in the Hebrew scriptures, it is no entry into worshipping idols or any other god but Yahweh. But in the north, they had a problem. The cultic center was the citadel of David, Jerusalem in the south. Uh, a bit like the days of East and West Germany, uh, with East Germany concerned that if the people went to the west, they may like it and stay. So the succession of kings in the north provided an alternative place to worship at Bethel and Dan. And despite their best efforts, or certainly on account with active encouragement, they began to worship the local deities, and in particular Baal. Uh, and it's during the reign of King Ahab that Elijah pops up almost out of nowhere, although we are told in 1 Kings 17 that he was from Tishbe in Gilead, and this was around 870 BC. Ahab, King Ahab, compounded the sins of his father Omri and went further when he married a Sidonian princess that you mentioned, whose name has passed into legend and proverbial folklore, Jezebel. Uh, and Elijah tells the king that it's going to be a three-year drought. Elijah then travels south to the east of the Jordan after giving this message to King Ahab, about a hundred miles away, and here he is cared for by God who arranges for a raven to bring him food. Uh, but the, the wadi dries up and God instructs him to travel to Zarephath about 85 miles away. So this guy truly is a pilgrim. He's wandering about all over the place. And it is here that he meets and stays with the widow and her son, uh, a story we'll again be familiar with. And all are miraculously fed. This is the cruise of oil uh, uh, and the little uh, grain that's there. And they're kept throughout the famine uh, and at one occasion, the son dies and Elijah brings him back to life with the, the work God working through him. Uh, Jesus gives reference to this as well. Uh, from here, he journeys back to Jezreel to meet with King Ahab uh, again. Uh, and then they travel about the 70 miles to Mount Carmel for one of the most colorful stories in the Hebrew scriptures. Uh, and this is the contest between the prophets of Baal, represented by 850 prophets of Baal and Asherah, and Elijah, on his own, representing Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Moses. This is a simple challenge Elijah throws down. How long will you go limping between two different opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal then follow him. Uh, and there's this amazing story there, it really is well worth reading, 1 Kings 18. And like David before Goliath, we talked about last week, Yahweh sent Elijah prevailed. And then he prays for rain seven times and sends his servant off to go over and have a look. Uh, and eventually the servant comes back and reported that a small cloud the size of a man's fist is rising out of the sea. Uh, Mount Carmel overlooks the Mediterranean. Uh, and so Elijah tells his servant to tell Ahab to get back quickly to Jezreel, otherwise he will get caught in the downpour. Meanwhile, Elijah hitches up his cloak and outruns Ahab on his horse and chariot the 17 miles back to Jezreel. Ahab gets home, and that's where we picked up the story, and tells his wife all that had happened, including the slaughter of all the 850 of the prophets. Jezreel, uh, Jezebel was not best pleased and sent Elijah a message. So may the gods do to me and more also, if I do not make your life like the one of them by this time tomorrow. Elijah, given a commission and spoke boldly to King Ahab, saw Yahweh close heaven and bring a punishing drought on the land, during which both he and a Syrophoenician widow would have enough to eat and seen her son brought back to life. Elijah had faced down 850 prophets of Baal and Asherah and seen the mighty hand of God accepting the sacrifice he offered, then praying for rain to end the drought and ran 17 miles in record time. What does he do when he hears this threat from Jezebel? Then he was afraid 
he got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and he left his servant there. Heading off and running away another hundred miles south back towards home turf. And from here, having left his servant, he travels out alone another day's journey into the wilderness and sits under the shade of a broom tree. Here is this mighty man of God, this outstanding prophet, the one who has appeared to Jesus as representing all the prophets. Here he is alone, depressed, and with thoughts of death. He asks that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Now, I've never experienced or been used of God in such a mighty way as Elijah. However, I do know something of this feeling of utter despair. Following my divorce in 1976, and if you want to know what that's about, check out 1 Corinthians 7, 12 and 16. But following that divorce, I had some very dark moments. Living in London and working for Church Army in 1979, I had one of those moments through a set of circumstances working through the fallout from that divorce. I received a letter that completely broke me and I found myself walking the streets of London at night in a fog. I remember looking at the dark waters of the Thames at, and thinking that uh, running with the steps running down to the embankment and it didn't look dark and dangerous to me but rather inviting like a cover you could slip under into oblivion and freedom from all the pain and stress. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I'm no better than my ancestors. A depression is a huge topic we couldn't even begin to get into a discussion about. However, two aspects of depression are highlighted here in the story, food and sleep, because people are either overheat or undereat and sleep long hours or suffer sleep deprivation. Uh, and we want to notice how gently God provides once again, and he sleeps, and he's woken to provision of water and bread delivered by an angel. And then it's time to begin to move on again, this time to Mount Horeb, 250 miles away across mountainous terrain that takes him 40 days and 40 nights a number that's always significant in scriptures as well. And on arrival, he enters a cave and rests for the night. Once more, notice the gentleness of God. A question is asked, what are you doing here, Elijah? So is this question and a remonstrance saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? Haven't you seen what I've done? Or is it seeking to allow Elijah an opportunity to express himself and say what's lying at the heart of his depression? We need to remind ourselves it's good to talk. And once we have given voice and expressed our concern, it begins to lose some of its power and control. If you are there, find somebody to talk to, please. Then God demonstrates his mighty power in one enormous pyrotechnic show. Maybe as a little reminder to Elijah just who he was dealing with. But the God of heavenly armies, whose voice can speak like thunder, is also the one who seeks to gather the chicks under her wings and speaks tenderly with love, care and compassion. Breathe through the earthquake, wind and fire, or still small voice of calm. And after the fire, the sound of sheer silence. Again, the same question. What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant and thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with a sword. I alone am left and they are seeking my life to take it all away. And that is the untruth that it's wormed its way into Elijah's mind and brought him to the point of depression. And we need to guard against lies and untruths entering our mind and destroying our peace. I've known times when it is just that one comment that just catches you off guard and it buries away there and disturbs your peace. 
But God says to him, no, you're not on your own. There are 7,000 faithful Israelites that have not bowed the knee to Baal or kissed him. And your next task, continues God, is to make some key appointments of my choosing, including your own successor, Elisha. They will carry forward my plans and purposes to expunge their idolatry and evil from the land. So, from Elijah, the unlikely runaway, we learn that it is okay not to be okay. We sometimes in the Christian life think we've got to go around with, uh, you know, full of optimism and, uh, and full of joy, which is true, that joy, but it's a deep joy but there'll be times when it's okay not to be okay. And to recognize as we do in this story, which I recognized, is that God never ever abandons us and will continue to use us for his purposes and plans. So if you're there today, take encouragement from this story. If you know others are in that place, deal gently with them, listen to them, speak to them. If after this morning somebody pops into your mind, then maybe that's God prompting for you to send them an email or a text or get on that phone and just saying, where are you? How are you? Do you want to speak to me? And may God bless us as we move forward. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Gordon, so much for your ministry to us this morning. A real blessing, and I'm very grateful for it. Sometimes it's okay not to be okay. Mm. What wonderful words they are. And the fact that God knows us, you know, he made us, he knows us, he knows our weaknesses, and he accepts those and loves us and still offers to use us. So echo Gordon's words, where are you, you know? What are you doing here, Elijah? Where are you? What's God saying to you about your life at this time? What is he saying in terms of assuring you of his presence and his power? Well, there's only one hymn that we could have possibly had to follow this. And so it is, of course, dear Lord and Father of mankind.
And now we come to prayer. Let's pray together, please. <clears throat> now, before we rush into bringing all our requests to God, let's just take the moment to be still and to listen to what God may be saying to us today. As we prepare these online services, we do so prayerfully, seeking that God might use them in a prophetic sense to speak into the lives of all who attend. So perhaps for at least one person here today, God has been applying his word to make it his special word to you. So for a moment, let's just be still and let's each in our hearts say, Lord, what are you saying to me through this passage of scripture? What is the question you would bring into my life today? How should I respond? So loving God, we thank you for your word and for the way in which it lives in the hearts and minds of people and of us in particular. And we pray, Lord, that you will bless your word to our hearts and glorify your name. We ask you, loving God, that you will also be mindful of those for whom we have concerns on our heart at this time. We pray for those who are known to us who need your healing touch or the comfort of your word. And we pray, Lord, that if you would want to use us as your servant to bring your word and your touch, that you'll help us to be ready. And we think especially of those who do not know you and take up the challenge to pray every day particularly for three people by name that are not yet Christians. And so again, in a moment of pause, each of us can bring before the Lord those who we are praying for. And then we think more widely of the problems in the world. We think of the ongoing crisis with the COVID-19 virus and its impact, there are still many thousands of people around the world desperately suffering. In some countries, <clears throat> now in Africa, some scary information coming from Africa at this time. We think of the situation in America and Brazil, and uh, there are other places as well. And we have our own problems here as well. Loving God, we pray for all those who are at the front line battling this virus. And we give you thanks for loving care by doctors and by nurses and faithful service by cleaners and other people who are working in the health service systems. We pray, Lord, that you will bless them and use them. We give you thanks for every one of them. We pray for those homes that have been overcast by sadness this week whether through the COVID-19 or other things that have taken away loved ones. And we pray that they may know your peace. Lord, you sent prophets out in the past. Send your servants out with words of comfort, strength and peace to those in need at this time. And we pray again for the world in general, the mess we're in. We think of the global warming, all sorts of issues. Think particularly at this time of farms in Africa that are devastated having already suffered so much but now because of the um, reduced numbers that are going on the Hajj instead of millions just a few thousands and many farmers have got no one to whom they can sell their livestock that's ready to be slaughtered and and we pray for your help for farmers throughout the world at this time. So loving God, hear our prayer as we bring our prayers to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. 
So let's bring all our prayers and thoughts together as we say the family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. So we draw our short service to a close. Thank you again for being with us today. Some of you have followed through since we began this series and we are planning to continue in the days ahead. There may be some slight alteration about logging, logging on, so watch out for an email from us to tell you about that. Have you got some time? Could you stay on a little bit longer and share at the coffee pot time? And um, that'd be good if you can. Uh, we hope you'll be with us next Sunday if possible. Are you free on a Tuesday evening at seven? Now we have a Bible study and we have finished the, the series that we've been doing in Ephesians and we've learned so much from that. It's been very interesting. It's an interactive Bible study session. You can bring your questions. No one judges anybody for the questions they ask. So please do join me on Tuesday evening, if possible, seven o'clock. And the information is on the website. So you can always go to the website and find the links there give you that address in a moment but this is the important bit if you are uncertain about your faith if you've got questions about your faith you're very welcome to send your questions in to Gordon and to me we'll share emails um, unless you ask us not to and we'll give you those addresses uh, in a little while but if you have any questions about your own personal faith take a note of this website christianity.org.uk that is Christianity dot org dot uk so here's the website address and also the email address if you wanted to send a personal email to me you put barry instead of the word info or to send a personal email to gordon you put gordon instead of info thank you again for your prayers and your support we value your prayers this ministry depends upon your prayers and obviously, we can't keep going if there's no finance. So if you're able to support financially, the address that you can do a donation to is give.net forward slash 2003, 2003, then 0, 888. That is give.net slash 2003, And thank you to those who last week or the weeks before have been making donations. I'm hoping to get to drop a line to some of you in the near future. If you go to that website, you get to a dedicated secure page to support the work of Rural Mission Solutions. We're very grateful for uh, the facilities that we've been using. The music, we've had two songs that we've had from Small Church Music. If you're not familiar with that, do Google it and, and look it up. It's a tremendous asset to small churches that don't have an instrumentalist. And uh, so their music is, can be live streamed uh, and is not restricted. And YouTube was the source for You Are My Hiding Place by the Maranatha Singers. The artwork that we've used, lovely picture of Elijah in the cave. We've no idea where that came from. So we weren't able to trace the copyright. But uh, that's the background information. So the last thing to say to you is stay safe and stay blessed. God bless you. And God bless you from me as well. And remember, it's okay not to be okay. And if you need to talk, then talk to somebody today.